Hello out there to our virtual audience. I can't believe it's September already. Uh, summers always go pretty quick for me, but this year it's absolutely flown by. And because it's September, it also means that Eastern European Missions, EEM, is going to be conducting uh, their Million Dollar Sunday at the end of the month. This is something that we can always gear up for to help and bless others as the gospel and the good news is spread to countries um, far from ours. Countries that are, are so receptive to God's word at this time. So I want you guys to mark on your calendar September 20th. Uh, that will be our Million Dollar Sunday, and we'll be gearing up in order to, to, to help out in their efforts overseas. You know, every time Ben Marinus comes and presents um, the good things that are happening over there, it's just eye-opening. and It's a blessing, uh, blessing to all of us as we uh, can participate in, in just a small way. Even though it's just a, a monetary uh, kind of blessing, it's a, it's a way that we can we can bless those who, who are far away from us. Uh, and it's an awesome way to help those uh, who may not have had the opportunity come in contact with Christ and hear the good news. So plan to be a part of those efforts on September 20th. I also hope to see you all here tomorrow for Mountainsides Friday Family Camp. Uh, it's going to be a good time. I know that we'll have a good fellowship and, of course, good worship. So please plan to be here tomorrow night at 6 p.m. Also, if you hear any noises in the background, uh, we're starting demolition on that south side of uh of the wing of the upstairs for mountainside uh so it's gonna be some noise here and there but it's gonna be uh it's gonna be well worth it as we'll open up some some walls and some classroom space so uh really open up the upstairs uh all part of the building project that we had planned for for the last couple of years can't wait for you all to to see it someday uh, now on to tonight's thoughts my boys are awesome and I can't wait for our third son who will be due in, in December. However, both Cooper and Theo are at the age uh, where they have discovered possessions. And primarily that in their world, possession is nine-tenths of the law. Now, Curtis informed me that that argument won't hold up in a court of law. Uh, but for my boys, it seems like nine-tenths of the law is the rule of their of their lives. If you have it, then it's yours. And so if you can take it, it's also yours. Uh, it seems to be this, uh, this carousel of them just constantly taking from each other. But that's kind of how we are as well. And I, you know, I get on to my boys and I think, well, can't you just realize that you both can play with two different objects at one time or that you can share or you can participate together. But in reality, we do this all the time uh, with the world around us. We get stuck in this idea of the grass is greener. And in the United States, it seems like we, uh, we almost major in the idea of the grass is greener. We get envious of people's talents, abilities, their possessions, their lifestyles. And then I, I'm reminded of Teddy Roosevelt's quote that comparison is the thief of joy. This can even happen with good things. I think in, in ministry, you get maybe jealous of someone else's church or someone else's ministry, even someone else's classroom space. And it can get kind of ridiculous when we start comparing to even the good things in our life. But it's extremely detrimental when we start to compare ourselves to uh, things that are evil within the world. When, when we start to be jealous of someone whose ways are, are not godly, are not focused on God. David, he obviously struggled with this. And he, he wrote several psalms that, uh, that, that remind him not to put his, his hope and his trust into the worldly things that, that, in his words, evil and wicked men delight in. But instead, he wants to focus on the goodness of God. We're going to read from Psalm chapter 37. I just want you guys to hear the words of David. And when you hear the words like evil, wicked, I want you guys to think of a life that doesn't put God's plans as a priority, or maybe not, doesn't include God's plans at all. Maybe that's where we, we can focus. Uh, so listen to the words of David as, as, he, as he writes down some of his deep thoughts and, and his relationship to God. 
starting in verse 1. Do not fret because of those who are evil, or be envious of those who do wrong. For like the grass, they will soon wither. Like green plants, they will soon die. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and enjoy safe pasture. Take delight in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him and he will do this. He will make your righteous reward shine like the dawn, your vindication like the noonday sun. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret when people succeed in their ways, when they carry out their wicked schemes. Refrain from anger and turn from wrath. Do not fret. It leads only to evil. For those who are evil will be destroyed, but those who hope in the Lord will inherit the land. Listen to these words of David. Trust in God. Commit your way to the Lord. Be patient for him and delight in him. You know, I look at those, those words and I see the contrast of the worry and the fret for people who have things that, uh, that don't include God in the plan. But David says that our treasure is not in the things of this world, not in the material things that we can see about us, but our treasure is in our relationship with God and the way that we, uh, we experience God. It's this closeness that we have that other people don't. And, and David says, this is where, uh, this is where life really is. And this is where we should be, uh, we should be investing our time and our energy. This is where we uh, find out how blessed we are, how God has sustained us, and how we prosper while we're on this earth. Thank you for listening. God bless and have a great day.